Are you dying to get the upright potato sack pose in your portfolio? Do you find it really intimidating to figure out safety and how to keep the baby upright without toppling over? Well, in today's lesson, I'm gonna show you step-by-step -step all the way from safety and posing through editing and everything in between. Plus my one special hack that makes it simple to accomplish every single time. So stay tuned. If you don't know me, my name is Michelle Brewster and I'm the owner of the Swaddle Pro and the Profitable Studio. I love helping maternity and newborn photographers just take charge of their business by bringing you guys the business and marketing tools to have a long-term successful studio. So be sure to subscribe. Here we are in my photographing room and I wanna walk you through the specific items that I use every single time to accomplish this pose quickly and easily. Plus that special hack that I was telling you about. So I always do this particular pose on a bean bag. So my bean bag, I have many, many layers on top of it. Plus I custom made a PVC frame to go around it to be able to clamp my backdrop onto to make it nice and smooth and not have to worry about just spending hours upon hours editing in Photoshop and making it perfect. So I have my bean bag. I have multiple, multiple layers of fleece on top of it. My top fleece is always my white fleece so that no matter what drop I put on top of it, I don't have to worry about any color shifts popping through that I then have to Photoshop. My top set, I love to use matching sets. I just think they create really beautiful pictures when the colors and the textures are very similar to each other. So this particular set is from Freebird Prop Shop. I love their sets, so I highly recommend checking them out. I will put a link below in the description. The second item is the Swaddle Pro. The Swaddle Pro is the base swaddle that's fully adjustable that will help them stay in that nice tight position, give them the support they need for their hands underneath their chin to accomplish that upright pose safely and easily. Swaddle Pro is a must have. The second thing that I use is natural cotton batting. So I use this to create the roundness around the baby and give them that nice, almost like egg shape kind of look so that they're full and they just have some beautiful different um, shapes to them so that it fits perfectly within the next hack that I'm gonna tell you about. So this is what made all the difference in this pose for me. Before, baby was rocking all over the place. It was so many different compositions that I was doing to try and accomplish this pose. And once I found these wreath styrofoam rings at Joann Fabric, it changed everything. It's a fantastic safety piece to have because once you stack them on top of each other, there's some really good depth to be able to put the baby into and give them support all the way around. These things were less than a dollar at Joann Fabric and I highly recommend getting a couple of these. Now I don't tape mine together because I like having the flexibility of moving these around if I need to. So sometimes babies are different shapes or the wrap technique that you're doing has maybe some fullness or a lot of extra fabric on the back and you need to be able to adjust and shift these back and forth. So I don't tape mine together. I like to just simply stack them on top of each other and sandwich them in between my fleece layers. And I'll show you that in just a second. So the next thing that I have that I always, always use for every single upright potato sack is natural furs. I love my curly furs and I specifically love to use these because of the ring styrofoam um, pieces that I use for the upright. So this is a great way to hide any of the shape that this might show popping through some of your fabrics. So now I'm gonna walk you through specifically where I put this within the backdrop and the bean bag. And then I'm gonna show you how I actually wrap the baby with the Swaddle Pro. I'm gonna walk you through the safety features, how to do a composite in editing and everything in between. So first, I like to take my styrofoam rings and put them directly underneath my top white fleece layer. I wanna have it underneath at least one fleece so that it's smooth shaped and it's not creating any wrinkles in the very top layer. So I simply take it, stick it back far enough that there's going to be a um, bean bag here in the front and my drop cascading there in the back. And then you'll see you've got a nice good divot here to be able to put the baby in and have the ring hold them there securely. 
So now the reason that I use this, because as you can see right here, you can see indentations of the rings. So I don't necessarily want to have to Photoshop those out. So fur gets rid of it for me. I don't have to worry about it. So all I simply do is take my furs, drape it up and over, have some of the curls come over the front. I always like to have some of the furs kind of way far back at a point to create that nice perspective. And then that way, when the baby sinks in, I have all this pretty texture, really being able to come up around the baby and you don't see any of the ring at all. So this is ultimately what my scene would look like before the baby goes in it. Now we're gonna pop on over using the stand-in baby to show you how to do the Swaddle Pro, get the wrap all situated and looking perfect, then popping the baby into the ring. I'm gonna walk you through safety, editing, composites, you name it, so that you can go back to your studio and accomplish this with ease. Here we are with the stand-in baby and the Swaddle Pro, and I'm gonna show you how to perfectly place a baby in the Swaddle Pro to make sure that they're secure for the upright potato sack pose. So the Swaddle Pro is really great because it's the only fully adjustable base waddle that has Velcro features that allows you to tuck their knees up nice and high, get their hand right below their chin so that you've got that nice support for their neck and their head for being upright. And it really just allows you to keep them just sound asleep, undisturbed, while you're switching out to other wrap techniques. So to start, you're gonna place the baby's shoulders up above the Swaddle Pro. So we're gonna go up a good amount, so that as you can see, the tops of the shoulders are up above the Swaddle Pro. So as you can see, there's a double wide hem here. That was created to be able to keep their arms from escaping. So it's got some nice extra thick stretch to it. So you don't have to worry about these little Houdinis just diving up and out of the Swaddle Pro. It holds them in nice and secure. So what you do first, you get them in, shoulders up above. You're gonna bring their hands underneath their chin. You're gonna make sure that you get them up there pretty good, up nice and high. You're gonna take the flap, wrap all the way around, Tuck in the side, Velcro, nice little tug, wrap it around, and then just stick it anywhere in the back. You don't have to worry about getting it perfect. The way that the Swaddle Pro was designed, it has a large surface area in the back to be able to get the Velcro stuck onto, so you don't have to worry that if you miss it or it just doesn't line up properly that it's not gonna work. So from here, their hands, you'll be able to adjust even more so afterwards, but now it's time to get the feet up nice and high. So what you're going to do is crisscross their legs. And the most important piece with this is you wanna try and get their knees as close to the bottom of their elbows as possible. So this stretchy fabric really allows you to completely get their legs in and up. So there's one knee all the way up there. I'm gonna take another knee, get it way up in there, take the flap, swoop it down around to the bottom, and once again, just stick it anywhere. It does not need to be perfect. There's such a big surface area for the Velcro to stick to that it can go anywhere and you're done. It keeps them in that nice round position, it gets their knees up nice and high and keeps them up nice and tight and allows you to keep the hands nice and secure where you need it to. So from here, this is where I take this natural cotton batting that I mentioned earlier that I got from Joanne Fabric. This, again, is used to just simply create the fullness around their midsection to create that nice round look. So from here, I just place it on, tuck it under, and start wrapping. You can simply use a neutral wrap if you have like a knit one, especially a knit one because it's nice and full. This I love because it also just gives the baby a little bit more support to hold the, the pose in the position because it's a tight fabric. So you keep wrapping around just like so. And now you've got the roundness that you need. As you can see here, 
the baby's shoulders are exposed, you'll be able to cover them with your outer wrap. There's plenty of neck space. You don't have to worry about being too tight and the baby not breathing well. So now you're ready for your top wrap. So I'm gonna go quickly through this next wrap so that we can get into the actual posing and the safety features of everything and then get over to Photoshop and start adding it all together so you can see the final outcome. So here we are with the stand-in baby and we are ready to roll. I've got my scene fully set up. I've got the rings directly underneath here so the baby can have some support and fit down nice and snug in there. I've got the stand-in baby fully wrapped with a little bow tie wrap and cute little headband to match the scene. My light is set up exactly where I want it. I like using my light in a split light scenario so that especially with a high key scene that's so white and so neutral, I like having shadows in the baby's face. So when it's off directly to one side in that split lighting scenario, you're going to have highlights on one side and shadows on the other side. And it will still have a beautifully lit scene, but it will just allow you to see the roundness of the baby's cheeks and nose and all their little eyelashes and features and whatnot better than shining the light directly on them and making it just super flat light. So now we're gonna put the baby directly inside the rings and I'm gonna show you how to support the baby, whether you're doing a composite or if the baby's in there nice and snug and you're good to go and you're able to do it without a composite. So the stand-in baby is ready to go. We've got the scene set up. You have the rings directly underneath your fleece layers. You've got your curly wool fur on top. Everything is perfect. Now all you simply need to do is pop the baby in and we'll start talking about safety. So from here, before we pop in, I wanna make sure that you know the best hand position to make sure that their head does not fall forward in this pose. So when you're wrapping, or even after you're done wrapping in case they wiggled or moved around at all, you basically wanna make sure that they have one hand on top of the other directly under the chin. That's what's gonna give the chin and the head support so it doesn't fall forward while the baby is upright. From here, you simply take the baby's bottom, find the middle of the ring, pop the baby in, get them nice and wedged in there perfectly. The rings, again, are adjustable because I do not have them taped together. At this point, you should always, always be supporting the baby's head. You never, ever want to leave the baby unassisted at all or else their head could fall over if they have an active dream, if they have a startle reflex or anything like that. You want to make sure that you are always holding on to the baby's head. From here, I simply do a composite every single time. Once I know that they're in the position that I like, I've got the curly fur, fur textures where I want it to be. I know that the picture aesthetically is ready to go. Lighting is all set. I've already done my test shots. That is when I will have either an assistant or the parent assist me with the composite for this. So all my assistant, or 90% of the time the parents will do, is stand off to the side, hold the baby's head, I take a picture, switch arms, hold the baby's cheek, I take a picture, then I chop it into pieces in the computer and stick it back together, which I will walk you through in just a second. So quickly, I just wanna point out lighting here. So as you can see, because I've got lighting off to one side, like you saw a second ago, I have nice highlights on one side and shadows on the other side. So you can really see the roundness of the baby's cheeks, nose, and all their cute little features. This pose is so easy to accomplish with all those little hacks that I showed you. The baby is in there nice and tight. 90% of the time, you probably don't even need a spotter, but you always, always want to have one and do a composite with this. From here, if you ever need to adjust anything because it's a bean bag, you can simply wiggle the baby around, get the baby in the perfect position, always keeping your hands on, and it is a beautiful, beautiful portrait. Here we are in Photoshop now with our two images that we took supporting the baby's head properly so that we can safely accomplish the upright potato sack shot. Now we're going to be walking through what I do in my studio to put these two images together and create one beautiful art piece for your clients. Very simply, I like to 
start with the image that has no hand being held on the top of the head. This is where I will lasso the top and drag it over to the other image. So to start, I like to just separate my images, make this one a little bit smaller. I'm going to use the lasso tool. I'm gonna to feather it at five pixels. And then there's really no rhyme or reason. I pretty much just loosely grab it. I like to go right underneath the headband so I have some forehead to work with and then just straight across, up, around, and done. From here, I choose the move tool, grab it, and pull it right over. Now I am gonna center it as best as I can. There's always 90% of the time you're gonna need to adjust the size of the layer that you're bringing over just in case you zoomed in or out or stepped differently um, to make it a little bit wider or closer up of a picture. So I'm gonna adjust that part now. One hack that I found that really works well is sometimes if you're not sure if it looks right and, and you're just not exactly positive that you placed it in the right spot, you can change the opacity of that top layer down to about 50% or so, and then try and line it up so that you can really see. So like, as you can see right here, the headband's matching up pretty good right there. Then I know that that's going to be probably the closest. Let's see, move it over back and forth a little bit. That's probably the closest that I'm gonna get it right here. So I'm gonna bring it back up to 100% opacity. And now I'm simply going to use the eraser to start making it look on the forehead the way that I want it to. So I'm probably with this one, and it does vary sometimes from babies to babies, especially if it's a boy and you have no hat on or headband on or anything, you may erase in different um, spots of the top layer. But because there's a headband here, I'm just going to go straight up to the headband, make sure that that's good. Now, the backdrop is where I'm seeing a lot of the difference, as well as some of the curly wool layer. So I'm going to open my eraser up a little bit bigger and just randomly erase where I see the lines coming through. I'm not really like super careful with this because I feel like the messier I erase, the more natural and real those two. Um, layers come together. So we've got this from here. Now I'm going to crop my image before I flatten. I want to get it to where I want it to go so that I don't have to edit out too much beforehand. Let's see, baby's tilted a little bit. Getting there. And I'm going to go right to the tip of the curls in the back and done. Okay, so now we really just have these edges here to be able to worry about. So you can see it right here on the left-hand side and right here on the right-hand side. So at this point, I'm gonna use the Profitable Studio Action Set to darken the edge on this side just a bit. There's not much that I need to do right here. Um, so we're gonna go over and we're gonna choose Paint in Dark. It's gonna tell you what to do in order to use the right tools and everything, it will select it for you. I'm gonna turn my opacity down to about 25%. And then I'm just gonna very quickly, very quickly go over. So as you can see, that's even already better just like that. It doesn't need to be an exact match because of what we're gonna do next. Okay, so now I'm gonna flatten everything. At this point, we have three different layers, as you can see here on the right. We have the darken, which is the action. We've got the layer that we brought over the top part of the baby's head, and then we have our background layer. So I'm gonna flatten everything. And now I'm just gonna simply use the patch tool so that I can get rid of these jagged edges here where you can really see the fact that there's a difference in contrast and that it was a different layer that was pulled over. So again, really messy, just like to do it so that it's no rhyme or reason. It doesn't create a pattern or clone anything that's gonna look repetitive. Just circle, drag and drop. Same thing with this side over here. Done. The little line I see here, just random there. 
Okay, so we're looking pretty good right here. This looks as if it's a baby that was able to accomplish this 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 pose without parents' hands or an assistant's hands holding onto their head to, for support. So now from here, this is where we, I really start enhancing. I bring back some of the highlights, making sure there's details in the shadows, and then really just kind of pull it all together with a nice pop. So what I'm going to do first is I do see some blue coming through in the backdrop and in the matching wrap set here. So I'm going to go to my masks over here and I'm going to go to hue saturate. I'm going to select blue and I'm going to bring down the saturation. So you can see that that's taking that away really nicely. I'm going to also go over just in case there's any cyan and do the same thing. Perfect. So that looks like a nice clean white to me. The curls themselves are going to have some yellow in them because it's more of a creamish tone, which is why I chose that headband to bring in some of those yellow tones from the cream curly layer here. Um, but what we're going to do next is I want to bring back some of the detail within the wrap. Because this was the closest to my light source, it definitely has some brightness to it. Even though you can see a lot of the texture, I know that working with some of my action sets that I use to create a nice pop to it, it might blow out some of these highlights. So I want to make sure that they're nice and dark before I add any of my finishing touches to it. So I'm going to flatten this. I'm going to come up and over to image, adjustments, image, adjustments, shadow highlights. I'm going to turn the shadows all the way down to zero because I'm not worried about those. And I'm simply just going to adjust the highlights only. And they change pretty quickly. So like I'm only at 2% two, 2 right now. And you could see how quickly that changed. So I may only even need to do one. I think one would be fine. Um, let's see here. Now we're going to go with two. Okay. So here is a preview of before and after. So I like the way that that looks. Now, I'm going to do one more adjustment just to the wrap to even pull in a little bit more with only making the wrap itself darker versus the entire highlights in the entire picture. So I'm going to pop over here again to the Profitable Studio Action Set and choose Paint in Dark again. And I'm going to make my brush smaller so that I can really just get in here and make that wrap dark enough that you can make out the texture really well, but still know that it's white. Perfect. Okay, so I'm gonna flatten my image again. And then from here, the next thing that I do is I like to sharpen everything to make sure that my subject has really sharp eyelashes and choose the sharpen action over here so that I can make sure their eyes, nose, and mouth and any other little features that I want are crystal clear sharp. So again, whenever you're choosing an action, if there are specific directions, it will pop up for you. I'm going to change the opacity here to 30%. I'm going to zoom in a bit. And I'm just going to come over and I want to be very careful of where I'm putting this because I don't want the pores to come through more. I don't want any little uh, blemishes on their skin or anything else really to be tack sharp because I'll get rid of those in the next step. I really just want to make sure that their nose, their mouth, and their headband, and we'll even do a little bit of the bow. Okay, so we're gonna flatten, open back up here, and then I noticed here when I was erasing that it looks like I got a little bit of the bottom layer here, so you can kind of see it popping through a little bit. So we're gonna adjust that really quickly with the patch tool. And just simply move it over to get rid of any of the background layer that came through. Just like so. Perfect. Okay, 
Next, what I like to do is make sure that they have beautiful, soft skin. So at this point, if the baby did have any acne or little scratches from their fingernails, I would use the patch tool to quickly just get all of those out of here. And then I would go immediately over and choose the powder press action to soften their skin. So this action is absolutely one of my favorite. It basically makes it look as if they have a powder press all over their face. So you don't lose any of the texture or the detail in their skin. So so many times I see photographers do too much editing to skin and it ends up looking like plastic. And this is really a fantastic action to just create a very soft, almost like porcelain doll kind of look to it, but still keeping all the texture. So I choose this and I am very intentional of where I put it. I do not go over the eyelashes or nostrils or lips because that's where we just sharpened and I don't want to then soften it. So I'm going to go around carefully around the eyes. This is also really great if you have a baby who had a lot of grumpy frown lines. This can soften the grumpy frown lines too. And then once I get around the nostrils, the eyelashes and eyelids and the mouth, I'm going to open up my brush bigger. And then I can go faster. And then I can just quickly go and I will turn this preview on and off in a second this layer so that you can see because as it looks right now it's so subtle that you don't actually think anything is happening until you turn on and off the, the action layer and you really get to see how nicely it, it makes their skin look. Okay so we're going to turn it off and on. So you can see it even softens the shadows. It's a really great action for skin. So we're gonna flatten this here now. And at this point, we're almost done. So I like to, and this is my own personal style, I love to blur the edges of my photograph so it's really soft and it almost creates a vignette that directs people to look into the middle of the photograph where my subject is. So I go to the lasso tool, I change my feather to 250 pixels and I just, again, really messy, really quickly go around and just make some crazy lasso loops. From here, I'm going to invert to be able to select the outside of the image rather than the inside of the image. I'm going to copy it and paste it to create a secondary layer over here. So I've got my background layer. And then I have the layer that I just created, the, the outer edge of my photograph. I'm going to go up to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur, and I keep mine right around 250 pixels. So as you can see, let me pull this off to the side here, before, after. It just creates that nice softness on a separate layer so that I can then further adjust it if I want to. So once it's here, I'm gonna choose my eraser tool. If I want to bring in some of the detail a little bit more back on this bottom part, or make sure that their head doesn't have any blur on it from that, um, we can choose to do that at this time. So I'm pretty happy with this. So I'm gonna flatten it, and I'm gonna do two more things, and then it's done. So from here, I wanna brighten the background just a little bit. I love that I can see all the details here, but it's nice and bright, but I feel like I'm losing it a little bit back here. So I'm gonna choose the Paint in Bright action. I'm gonna keep it at the 30% that it's currently on and I'm gonna make my brush nice and big. You also want to make sure that the edges of your brush, that the hardness is at 0% so it's nice and soft. So now I'm just gonna quickly go around, go around, and I'm done. Flatten it. And the very last thing is I'm going to choose Subtle Pop, and you'll see what it does here. It gives it that nice pop. So it's just like a beautiful way to bring your photograph to life. So it is um, one of those action sets that has adjustable layers. So as you can see here, it's in a group folder together. So you can always open up that and adjust anything within here. So like as you can see, I've got a Bright and Pop. So that brightens it quite a bit. If I don't like how bright it is right here, I can simply change the opacity level, bring it down a bit, 
bring in some of those details again from the wrap. I can do all kinds of stuff, but I'm pretty happy with where it's at right now. So I'm going to flatten this. And then actually the one last thing that I want to do before I save this is I would like to round out the baby's shoulders a little bit more, which is a very simple thing to do in filter and the liquify tool. So from here, I'm going to use the smudge option right here, or I should say the warp tool. I always call it smudge. And we're going to make this a little bit bigger. And then we're simply going to do tiny, tiny little adjustments. I go pretty slow, minimal, minimal adjustments, a little bit at a time. Make my brush smaller. Put this one out. Put this one down. Bring this up a bit. Almost there. Get a little bit bigger again. I think we're pretty good. Oops, wrong way. There we go. Okay, I'm happy with the way that looks. You can see before, after. Save that. And that's it. That's the final photograph. That's how you do a composite of the upright potato sack pose, how you make it absolutely beautiful, however, very safe and easy to accomplish. So I hope you enjoyed this. Definitely give me a like if this gave you information that you can then use in your own studio and post a little comment below and let me know what part of the video you like the best.